PCI Express is a standard interface for graphics cards these days, and before it was AGP. But what if your PC doesn't have either, instead including only plain old PCI? Should you even bother getting a graphics card for such an antiquated slot? Let's find out. The two PCI cards I'll be testing are the GeForce 4 MX4000 128MB card from EVGA and the GeForce 6200 512MB card, also from EVGA. The former is a DirectX 7 compliant card released in December 2003, while the latter is DirectX 9C compliant and came out in t 2009. The 6200 was released for PCI Express in 2004, for crying out loud. Anyway, both of these cards will be installed onto a Compact Presario 6330 US motherboard with the full specs down in the description. So how do these GPUs perform compared to the Ingrid Intel Extreme graphics? A little note before we start the benchmarks, all tests are done to resolution of 1280 by 1024 at 75 hertz, unless mentioned otherwise, as I believe this represents many of the early LCD monitors still in use today, and I'll be shooting for max settings where possible as well. The first game on our list is Revolt, or rather the modern source port of the original game, RVGL. I did a 4 lap race on Botanical Gardens Reversed and Mirrored in Clockwork Carnage mode so more action would need to be rendered. And I also disabled anisotropic filtering because not all the cards could support the same level of that filtering. And here we see all cards handing in pretty good performance with nice scaling as the cards increase in power. Uh, RVGL in my opinion is the most well optimized game in the list and it can run on the broadest range of hardware configurations. Oh, and that 7 FPS minimum on the MX4000? Don't pay much attention to it. In that run, there were multiple explosions and particle effects on screen at that exact moment, something that wasn't there when testing the other cards. Next up is the most demanding game I tested, Unreal Tournament 2004. For this benchmark run, I loaded up Deathmatch in Tokara Forest with 15 adept bots on the default settings, uh, which were just a step down from maxed. PCI cards absolutely destroy Intel's integrated graphics, thanks to hardware geometry processing, which is something the Intel chip offloads to the CPU, slowing everything down. I don't recommend playing this game on Intel Solution on any settings, but reducing the resolution and or details for the PCI cards makes for a LAN party worthy experience. Moving to an OpenGL game, we have the now freeware Tribes 2. This bench was done on the Fracas Deathmatch map with 16 bots of medium high skill, and all the cards struggled with outdoor action, while performance improves majorly when indoors. I would definitely turn down a few settings to be able to run this game well. Next is a bit of an oddity from one of my favorite indie developers, The Wonderful End of the World. This game has no settings and only runs at 1024 by 768 so I chose the most demanding level, Cafe Internets, for the bench. For some reason, the MX4000 did better than the 6200 in this game, and I would guess that's either due to the way I played in the 6200 run, or perhaps the older driver powering the MX4000 has less CPU overhead than the 6200. In any case, the experience isn't great on any of these cards. The obligatory IdTech 3 test is provided by Open Arena, where I ran the game's built-in demo that includes a ton of bots. All settings except Bloom were maxed out for this test, and every card got crushed by the load, especially Intel's, but it's possible there may be a CPU bottleneck across the board due to the sheer number of bots. For our next test, I used Colin McRae Rally 2.0 to see how each GPU would cope with an unoptimized game. I chose the Sweden track with 5 Bach cars and 3 laps for the test, and as expected, all of the GPUs sucked. The MX4000 and 6200 were nearly neck and neck and the Intel Extreme Graphics was frankly not that far behind. If you're going to play this game, expect to do a lot of tweaking to the settings to get it to run well. The last game I tested was also the most problematic. Motocross Madness 2 had a funky incompatibility problem with Fraps, where the frame rate counter would appear, but every benchmark attempt would return 0 FPS. I also had trouble with Fraps recording on another more powerful PC, hence the potato quality video from my phone. I'll spare you the details here, but check the comments for my guess on what's going on. Rambling aside, no significant gameplay improvement was made by moving from the MX4000 to the 6200, but at least both were better than the extreme graphics on the Houston Supercross map with 10 bot riders. 
Uh, Motocross Madness 2, like some other Microsoft games like Freelancer, enforces double buffer V-Sync, which means that if your PC can't keep up with the refresh rate of your monitor, the game will target some fraction of the refresh rate. In this case, the frame rate will often dip to 25 FPS or lower when things get busy on screen and stay around 37 or 38 normally, but never reaching the target 75 FPS. It's a crappy situation, but it's unrealistic to expect a 16 year old game like this one not to have any issues. Clearly, the PCI graphics cards put the hurt on our integrated graphics, but that shouldn't surprise anyone. Cards with dedicated memory and geometry processing are going to rack solutions without, in almost all cases. You'd have to be trying really hard to come to a different conclusion. There is another feature of the 6200, though, that puts it above the other two graphics solutions, besides speed hardware shaders. The 6200 supports shader model 3.0, which is very slightly better than the 2.0 required by all sorts of software, from indie games to Windows 8 onward to freaking adventure capitalist, because nothing says upgrade like carpal tunnel. Put simply, a card with shaders will not only typically be faster than a card without, but you'll be able to do more with it. Great, but what about the cost? The exact cards I have go for $8 and $20 on eBay respectively. And these prices aren't terrible, especially for the MX4000, but there are better deals out there, like this Radeon 9250 for $750, which gets you at least basic hardware shaders, although they aren't nearly as versatile as the 6200s. But the question remains, should you buy a PCI graphics card? Well, if you're even considering it, you're likely in a situation where you'd benefit greatly from the increased performance and feature sets over integrated graphics. I think the better question is, which one to buy? My advice is to get a card that has the highest feature set supported by your operating system. For example, DirectX 10 is unsupported by Windows XP, so why pay extra for a card with DirectX 10 compliance that you can't fully utilize? For XP machines, the 6200 or Radeon X1300 are great choices, and for PCs running Vista and up, the Radeon HD 5450 or GeForce GT610 are even better. That's all for this one, but make sure to stay tuned for the next video where I bring the Radeon X1550 into the fray and see if overclocking makes these cards any better. Thanks for watching.